Hey, what's up? So here are my top five AI and machine learning predictions for the start of 2025. Listen to me very carefully. My number one prediction is that people will keep on arguing about whether or not AI progress is good, happening too fast, and whether we're all gonna die from super intelligent AI. People will argue about the impact on politics, the impact on job loss. People will argue whether open source is good or bad. People will argue whether giant companies or single individuals inside of those giant companies should have an impact on the AI that gets developed. And my number one prediction is that people will keep on arguing about AI. People argue about things all the time. And um, we're going to continue to have big news stories and we can continue to have big debates in the next year about whether AI is good, bad, too fast, too slow, all of these things. My second prediction is that OpenAI will release GPT 4.5 or GPT 5, um, the next version of their generative pre-trained transformer. It'll be a multimodal model that will have image, um, uh, text and probably a video input as well, as well as document input already. I think that's already kind of the case. Um, and I think this is going to be the last model that OpenAI releases that is kind of in the generative pre-trained transformer kind of architecture pipeline. Like I don't think there's going to be a GPT-6789. They're going to start to release other different models that do different things, accept different inputs, um, or that either that control robotics or do other things. They're not going to be just the next version in a long line of GPTs all the way to AGI. They're going to start doing different things, different tasks, and they're going to start releasing different systems that do different things. But yeah, I do think that sometime this year we're going to see either um, a modified version of GPT-4 is in 4.5 or GPT-5, which is going to be a lot better than the current GPT-4. Um, it's going to fix a lot of the problems, a lot of the um, hallucinations, a lot of the bias and a lot of the kind of laziness that we're seeing in the current model. Um, and I think it will actually pass the Turing test for most people. This year, 2024, I'm like willing to concede that like 75% of people that you show a GPT model to, that they didn't know was a GPT model, you showed them a, a phone and on the other end was a person. There were two chats, one, uh, there was a WhatsApp, you've got a WhatsApp window and on one chat you've got an AI and the other you've got a person. I don't think that the average person by the end of this year will be able to tell whether or not they're talking to an AI or whether or not they're talking to a person. And that's scary because people have talked about the Turing test for years as like the ultimate test of whether or not we're living, you know, in, in the machine age and whether or not humans are... Uh, AIs are smart as us and I think this year is going to be the year where we really start to get into that uncanny valley of is this a person or is this a robot I'm talking to on the internet and of course there will still be big mistakes with the new models and there will still be ways to determine that you're not talking to a real life person but I think that line is going to get increasingly blurrier and blurrier and blurrier each year and this year is the year that I think that's going to start to get really trippy for a lot of people. My third prediction is a short one. It's just that uh, open source models will continue to improve and get better and reach some of the capabilities that closed source models already have. Like OpenAI just released Sora a few weeks ago now, their video, uh, text to video model, and it's incredible. And I think that we're going to see other guys like Midjourney release great text to video models soon and then the open source models following close behind. But I still think that OpenAI and the closed source um, infrastructure like Gemini and that are going to retain their lead for several years just by virtue of the fact that it's so expensive to train these models and in the next couple of years it's going to get more and more expensive like seven trillion dollars expensive uh, to train and to build these super cool um, super cool models that we all love and use and I do think that open source is going to continue getting better and better and I hope that it gets better and better and we continue to use it and support it but I still think it's going to be a long time if ever that they catch up just because of the money involved in this this is not like um web 2.0 where startups could uh, capitulate a larger um established companies and overtake them just because of the virtue of the fact of how much uh, money and compute it takes to train these things but that's my opinion I hope to be proven wrong my fourth prediction is that there will be some major influence on the US election this year. You are fake news. Um, definitely in the second half of the year, we're going to see deep fakes, we're going to see fake news, we're going to see fake sound bites, we're going to see fake all these things um, paraded around the US election to influence people to vote one way or the other, to vilify the other sides. And we're going to have increasingly um, increasing fear mongering about AI. Despite the fact that I don't think the models are that dangerous at the moment compared to the free internet. I mean, you can Google how to do a whole lot of horrific stuff on, on just plain Google and Wikipedia that GPT and Gemini will already fail to um, fail to tell you about because they don't want uh, to be known for that sort of thing. Um, and so there's going to be increasing, increasing fear mongering and... Um, you know, a doomerism around AI and that AI is bad for us and AI is going to kill us and that like every new technology wave, it's going to have its detractors, it's going to have its doomers 
And I think that we're going to have more and more of that in the second half of the year when the US election inevitably gets impacted by the modern media landscape that it gets, just gets supercharged by fake images, fake videos and fake audio um, near the end of the year. So yeah, I'm, I'm keen to see what happens with that. It's instructive as well that before the systems are too powerful that it starts affecting our, our society and we, we try to learn to deal with it before it gets too powerful. I mentioned it earlier, but my fifth prediction for this year is that OpenAI will release another non-GPT model such as like an assistance model or robotics model that controls robots and physical objects or can go out on the web and do things for you completely. Um, it's going to be multimodal, it's going to have completely different architecture. Yeah, I just think that OpenAI is going to release something super cool this year, um, later in the year, just how they bamboozled everyone with Sora now and came out of the woodworks and was like, bam, we've got something amazing for you. I think we're going to do something similar in the second half of the year with something completely left field that someone inside of OpenAI is currently grinding on, putting the nade lights, um, putting together a great system for some weird and wonderful piece of technology that is not just a plain GBT. Uh, that we're going to get to play with in the second half of the year. And then finally, my sixth prediction is that Ray Kurzweil and Nick Bostrom will both release new books. Well, they, this is not a prediction, it's already happening. Um, but that the media landscape will attach to these books and talk about them constantly. So Nick Bostrom, uh, the author of Superintelligence, like the, one of the most important books in AI literature, is releasing his book Deep Utopia, uh, the sequel to Superintelligence, in March, so like a month from now. Um, that's going to be very interesting to see what he thinks about the current um, improvements in AI and improvements in machine intelligence since his previous book. And then Ray Kurzweil also hopefully by June is going to release the sequel to The Singularity is Near, where he talks about like the ultimate future of machine intelligence and just how awesome it's going to be for everyone and technology and all of that. And yeah, both those books have had a very big impact on like the culture of AI and the culture of um, a lot of sci-fi even, um, specifically um, The Singularity is Near. It's influenced a lot of sci-fi tropes. And so I'm very keen to see what these two authors have to say, given the amazing progress we've seen in the past couple of years. And yeah, it's my prediction that there's going to be a lot of debate and nerds like me are going to love when those books come out and can't wait to read them. And it's going to dominate the, the kind of mimetic landscape, as Beth Jesus likes to say. Rather, we're just going to talk a lot about them in the next couple of months. And then bonus, uh, bonus prediction is that if you had to ask me when I think we're going to have like super intelligent AI, when like you actually have like a machine that most people will think is conscious and is like on the same intelligence level as the average human, I think that's definitely before the decade is out, hey? I mean, already kind of, if you can pass the Turing test with GPT 4.55 this year, I think a super intelligent agent that can do most of the things that a human can do, whether it's plugged into all different APIs and plugged into like an assistant, a web browser, that sort of thing. I think that's coming for the end of the decade. So 2029 is what Ray Kurzweil has for a long time predicted AGI. Uh, is the year, is that the year that AGI is going to arrive? And I think that's a pretty good prediction. If not sooner, we'll see how things go this year. Um, yeah, those are just my short predictions for AGI, AI, machine learning in the next 12 months. Um, let me know what you think about my predictions in the comments. I'm super interested in, always have been super interested in computers and intelligence and machines doing super cool things for humans because our modern day of life is completely made possible by our machines and our technology. And I can't wait for those things to get better and better and for us to do cooler, more important, uh, just more awesome things with the technology that we create. And so, yeah, let's see what happens. Talk to you later. Bye.